prehistoric kingdom's first dev diary of the year is here. Three new animals, staff and baby dinosaurs. That's right, you heard me correctly. The dinosaurs are breeding. Life found a way. But we'll get to that. We've got a lot to go through, so hold on tight. First of all, the team have been hard at work making sure that the dinosaurs don't walk through each other. So we can all look forward to more spatially aware dinosaurs in update 10. So let's remind ourselves for what's coming in update 10. First up, we have the Elasmotherium, a huge species of rhinoceros with a massive horn on top of its head. And what's going to be really interesting about this is that each animal is going to have its own unique horn. So the horns will appear different in each individual you place in your park. What's that? One rhino isn't enough. We'll have another then. Here we have the Sinotherium, which is an ancestor of the Elasmotherium. This is a hairless rhino, and I think it will suit the grassland biome very, very well. So we're getting two species of rhino and two species of cave lion. And along with all these Stone Age animals, we also have a Stone Age theme with lots of new building materials to help add a bit of character to your park. And you can see here we've got a bit of a Stonehenge going on and some caveman huts made out of hide. I think this will suit very well in Pleistocene Park. And along with all this, we're also getting a new map set in Canada. Look at it, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think this would be a brilliant place for these animals to call home. And we're also getting aurora lights in this map. Wow, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Imagine as it gets to night time and you look up and see these beautiful colours dancing across the sky. They really have thought of everything. Okay, so next up we have staff. And as you can see, there are lots of different job roles available. So if you'd like to hand in your CV and work with dinosaurs, then please send them off in the post. Applications are now open, I wish. So there are two different groups of staff. There are generalists and there are specialists. On the generalist team, we have cashiers, janitors and logistics. Very important job roles here to ensure that the park has proper cash flow, uh, is kept clean and also maintained. And the AI of the staff seems to have a lot of detail to it. The staff are constantly going to be looking at different jobs and different tasks that they can do. So if there is no queue and there's no customers in the store, rather than the cashier just standing there looking bored, he will get up and start stocking the shelves and making sure that they're all full. And then we have specialists. This is made up of keepers, vets, security, and engineers. So you obviously need a keeper to look after your animals and make sure that they're fed and uh, you know the exhibit is kept clean and mucked out. You definitely need vets in case the animal gets ill. And I wonder if this is going to be something that is brought up in the future of this game. I wonder if the dinosaurs might catch different diseases and things like that and you'll have to send them off to your vet to be checked out. And then we have security, which of course is very, very important in case an animal, God forbid, escapes. The security will have to make sure all the fences are secure and if an animal does get out, they'll probably have to dart it and catch it and get it back in the enclosure as soon as possible. And then lastly, of course, the engineers who will be responsible for maintaining sturdy fences to make sure that the animals don't get out in the first place. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Yes, that's right. Baby dinosaurs at last. 
we have a game where we're actually going to see our dinosaurs breed and have babies. It's about time. And I think this is really going to set this game apart from other games. I know that we've all wanted this from Jurassic World Evolution for a very, very long time and we still haven't got it. I don't know why, because everyone loves baby dinosaurs. So your dinosaurs will start off as a baby and as time goes on, they will grow into an adolescent. And then as time gradually goes on again, they will then eventually grow into a full grown adult. And don't worry, it's not just going to be a shrunken down adult. The babies will actually have their own patterns. And you can see here with this Edmontosaurus, the head looks a little bit larger and the eyes look a little bit larger as well. You tend to see this with babies. They tend to have really big heads and uh, smaller bodies in comparison. And it'll be interesting to see other dinosaurs and the different variations they have, like a baby T-Rex having feathers and a bit of fuzz on it. And then as it starts to grow older, it starts to lose this gradually over time. And every single animal on this game will have its own unique pattern as a baby but they will still have their own unique individual colours and patterns because on this game no two animals are the same. So although the patterns and colours are similar, there'll be slight things that are off. So one might be a different shade of colour or the size of the animal as well. Some of the animals are a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller. So they're all going to be individuals, but each baby will have its own unique pattern. So it's not just going to be all babies will have a copy and paste pattern at the beginning. They'll all be individual, which I think is very, very good. Now, if you're playing in sandbox mode, you'll be able to choose what age your dinosaur is when you put it in. You can choose baby, adolescent, or an adult. But if you're playing in campaign mode, your dinosaur will start off as a baby and you'll have to feed them up to get them to grow into an adult. Or if you want an adult, you're going to have to buy one. And remember, these are dinosaurs, so they're going to be quite expensive. So this brings into the question, breeding. Will we get this at a later date? I think we will, but at the moment, we're just starting off with babies. But it makes me think, what are we gonna get in the future? What behaviors are we gonna see? Are we going to see mating rituals? Are we going to see dinosaurs fighting for the right to mate? Maybe some triceratops going horn to horn, fighting, trying to compete to impress the females. And also we're going to see other things like uh, nest building and um, tending to the eggs. And when the eggs hatch, are we going to see parents looking after their babies. I think this will be absolutely fantastic because at the moment the dinosaurs look beautiful. They look so real and very paleo accurate but I think we still need a few more behaviours just to bring them to life and I think this would be fantastic. Imagine a mother you know walking along and the babies are following her and she's showing them what to eat and she's you know protecting them. I just oh, I can't wait to see this further along in this game. But so far, these babies look great and I can't wait to see all the different variations and designs the team have made for them. And if all that wasn't enough, we have one last dinosaur coming in update 12. The Thunder Lizard is on its way to Prehistoric Kingdom. That's right, the Apatosaurus is coming to your park. A chunky sauropod from the Jurassic period. And I must say, this design looks absolutely gorgeous. And we're getting two different species here, two different subspecies. We're getting the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus, because of course this dinosaur was named twice. It was first named the Apatosaurus, and then it was discovered by another paleontologist who named it the Brontosaurus. And of course you have to go with the first name, so Brontosaurus was thrown out, but here we're giving a little salute to it by naming a subspecies after Brontosaurus. 
and it's now been 10 years since the Prehistoric Kingdom team began this project. And I must say, they've come a very, very long way. Just look at this Triceratops and how it's evolved and changed over these 10 years. It just shows just how far they've come. They really have done an extraordinary job and I can't wait to see what they do next. So there we have it, lots to look forward to. If you haven't already, smash that like button, leave a comment down below letting us know your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe. If you want more Prehistoric Kingdom, check out the playlist on screen now.